Hi folks, welcome to Eyes on the Sky for the weekend of April 17th, 2020. This week, we're gonna feature my favorite planet. We'll start our talk today looking out at the blue sky before sunset. Have you ever wondered why the sky is blue? We have a blanket of gas around the Earth that we call our atmosphere. The sun shines heat and light energy into our atmosphere, and the white or visible light gets scattered around by the gases around the Earth. Blue is the shortest wavelength of visible light, and it bounces all over and reflects back to our eyes. Blue sky. What would happen if we took away the atmosphere? Well, first, we'd lose the blue sky. Also, we'd see the sun's light shining on the ground, and we'd see the sun in the sky, but we'd also see all the other stars at the same time. This is what the view would look like if we were standing on the moon. The moon doesn't have an atmosphere. Now, let's watch the sunset so we can get to the night sky. Notice how as the sun's light bends around the horizon at sunset, we start to see other colors in the evening sky near the horizon. Yellow, orange, pink, and red all start to scatter back towards our eyes. Well, as it turns out, our atmosphere does a lot more for us than just make the sky a brilliant blue, make beautiful sunsets, and hide the stars. Without it, Earth would be a frozen ball of rock. A little bit more like Mars. This is because of the greenhouse effect, named after the way a greenhouse warms what's growing inside. As the sun's rays come through the atmosphere, some get reflected by clouds and such, and some make it all the way to the ground. The ground absorbs them and then re-emits that light energy as heat. As that heat rises back off the earth, some of the gases in our atmosphere catch it and keep it bouncing around, which has warmed up the earth, especially in the past 10,000 years or so, to a habitable 65 degrees on average. But wait, you might be thinking, I thought the greenhouse effect was bad. Well, in this case, it's a little bit like too much of a good thing. No greenhouse at all, frozen rock. Too much greenhouse effect. Let's just look at our other neighbor, the planet Venus. The atmosphere of Venus is super thick and dense compared to the Earth. If we can say it's like Earth has one blanket of gas around its surface, Venus has like a dozen blankets. And if you can imagine wearing that many blankets, even on the chilliest night, you'd be really warm. While the Earth's atmosphere is made of about 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen, and a little bit of some other stuff. Venus's atmosphere is 96% carbon dioxide and a little over 3% nitrogen. As it turns out, carbon dioxide, which you breathe out every day, is one of these greenhouse gases. The average temperature on Venus is a staggering 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Scientists think this is an example of a runaway greenhouse effect meaning the cycle kept feeding itself and it kept getting hotter and hotter over time. This makes Venus, which is hot enough to melt metal and with a thick toxic atmosphere, a pretty inhospitable place to live. Also, there's the acid rain. So is this what we worry about on Earth? Earth has been cycling carbon through its land, sea, atmosphere, and all living things for a very long time. And for the most part, our carbon dioxide levels have remained fairly balanced. If we look at historical data, both from modern measurements and from ancient ice cores, though, we notice right around the time of the Industrial Revolution, levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere began to rise into uncharted territory. This is when we started digging up fossil fuels and burning them, creating an imbalance in the carbon cycle. Massive deforestation as humans spread all over the planet and trying to grow food to feed 7.8 billion of us also contributes as we are limiting the places that carbon dioxide can get recycled. These increases in the last 200 years have led to the climate change we're experiencing right now, from which scientists forecast dramatic impacts on our incredible, beautiful planet that can host a brilliant diversity of life. On this 50th anniversary of humans deciding that our home is actually pretty important, and we should be much more careful of how we treat it. We'll end with one of the most important pictures of the Earth that we've ever seen, from space, 
one which really helped to spark the environmental movement. This picture is named Earthrise, and it was taken on the Apollo 8 mission. It was the very first time that we saw our Earth from space. Major General William Anders, who took the photo, famously said, We came all this way to explore the moon. And the most important thing is that we discovered the Earth. Happy Earth Week, folks. Tune in all this week as we showcase a truly unique planet, our very own pale blue dot. That's it for today, folks. Make sure to check out our content on all the social media. Step outside and appreciate the Earth this week. And keep looking up.